Uh, I'll show you, so uh, let's say you have uh, already a count you can have from IBM. So we have already a few different machines here, but it's very easy to add new one. So just simply uh, choose where you want to have it. Uh, I don't know, let's for instance choose uh, Germany. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then as a, <coughs> you just search for backup solution here. So click next. So this is what we got. It's reminiscent of DOS star <laughs> something star. That's the search thing in IBM Smart Yeah, it's IBM. Right they run rational actually as a behind this, so it doesn't work without stars. Clearly, <laughs> IBM does not MS DOS. That would be heretical. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, what we have here, we have uh, three images. Uh, one is for uh, Linux, another for uh, Microsoft uh, Windows, so you can choose uh, if you want to implement uh, a secret solution, either uh, Linux or uh, Windows. So uh, if you will choose it, you will have all the environment ready. You can install any secret application. Also, we have a Linux-based platform. Actually, uh, this one is a full environment. So if you will choose this one, you will get the full pre-installed environment with all the secret application that we have many of them. So you don't really need to run the installation. You can just uh, start uh, your evaluation uh, or proof of concept day one, or you can even use for production if you want to. So I choose uh, uh, this one, and then we go next. You simply choose one of the, I don't know, very simple uh, name. And also you can specify uh, how much uh, memory do you want, uh, CPU, and so on. And of course you will have a different cost. And you go click next, and the next, and of course you need to Increase. Absolutely. It's IBM, there's lots of lawyers there. <laughs> so, so what we're doing is we're basically setting, a, secret ha a secret's architecture is really made up of two components. There is a collector, the agentless collector as we talked about, and then there is the repository. The collector is called the DS clients, the repository is called the DS system. You can have many, many DS clients all sending data into a single DS system. Again, it's designed for service providers, so it's multi-tenanted out of the box, okay? So um, Sergey has already created uh, the environments for us because we don't want to bore you guys uh, with creating the basic environments. The DS yeah. client, which is sitting way up at the top, is the collector yes. in Japan. The DS system is sitting in Markham, Canada. It's a little suburb outside of Toronto for those of you who visited there. And uh, the backup source is also sitting in Japan. So in the, J in the Japanese part of the cloud, you have the Asigra collector, the DS client, and you have a machine which is the target that is basically the source that is trying to back up the data. Okay. From. So I'll show you, for example, on this DS system in Markham. So just to show the software, how it looks. So we have the basic structure, we have customers, we have uh, the collector, and under the collector we have actually uh, the backup set. So the data is uh, here. So now, uh, just to show it quickly, so we have a, uh, this is my uh, source machine that I simply run RDP, like many cloud solutions. And I have a, this uh, Anybody nice quickly file. recognize that text? Anybody know where that text is from? 1984. Very good, Howard. Very good. <laughs> wow, that was fast. I was thinking, you know, maybe in 10 seconds. But no, if you, for example, three. if you. Uh, Windows 1984. Yeah. So if you choose this one, big brother, so <laughs> definitely everybody will recognize this one, right? So, yeah. Okay, so what we'll do, um, in, in many cases, uh, that you don't really need to restore the entire environment, you just simply need to uh, recreate the file that you by mistake deleted <coughs> or change it some, what I will do. So I delete it, uh, I can save it now. Let's see if it's saved yet. It is, so we can close it. Now I will go, uh, this is another piece of our software that is a data collector and also in order to restore it you need to use it as well. So I can simply click on restore, let's bring it here. Uh, you can choose uh, the entire data, you can also go uh, and choose only one file. I will choose everything because I didn't change anything else. 
You can also choose to restore it into original location, or you can choose to restore it to, to some other place if you want to have uh, both the version. Different directory, different yeah. IP address, even different location. So we have many options. Uh, usually oh, the default setup is good enough for everybody unless you want to have a some. Okay, it's, it's basically done. Let's go back and check. Yeah, we got it back. So. Bright call day enable. Okay. Okay. So, uh, this is, of course, uh, what we do, it's not only for the files. We also do it for database and uh, some other application, but with the simple files, it's much easier to show. That's it. So, uh, Seeger is, uh, again, it's an enterprise platform, so it backs up uh, Oracle, Oracle clusters, Oracle running on, uh, you know, all these different types of uh, platforms mm -hmm. that it does, DB2, SQL, uh, pretty much what you'd expect from an enterprise backup application, uh, AS400, even Novell, even group-wise, um, you know, lot, lots of, it's a big uh, support matrix that we have over the years. Uh, of course, the virtualized uh, environments is VMware, we do. VMware, KVM. So, Hyper-V. Hyper-V, so lots of, uh, even uh, Parallels Virtuoso, as well as, uh, what else did we miss, Hyper-V? Yeah, it's real long. Citrix, I think, is the one that we didn't say yet. Yeah, even server we didn't mention yet. Okay. So okay. I, th I think the next um, piece of the demo that we'll do is around salesforce.com. That's um, correct. The use case around salesforce.com is really about when an enterprise has data sitting in a SaaS application, the burden of responsibility around protecting that data does not shift to the SaaS application vendor. Okay. The SLA, if you go and you actually look at their agreements, they'll try to work with you, they'll do their best. But their SLA and the backups that they take in their data centers is all about their SLA to you, meaning the uptime of the application. It's not about helping you if you lose your data or if you accidentally you know, click the wrong thing. Now, around Salesforce specifically, Salesforce does have, for those that, that use it, you'll know it does have an undelete or a, a garbage bin or a recycle bin. It could keep three generations. It keeps them up to 45 days and so on. So that's very nice and good. But what it doesn't have is it doesn't have a way how to unedit something. So if you by accident edit something and you click save, you cannot unedit it. So what do you do? You have to go to Salesforce, and it's not in their contract. They'll charge you money, but they will work with you to take out their backup tapes and restore the image the way it looked like before you edited it. Here's the catch. When they restore it, it's the entire image of your data. So if you have, I don't know, a thousand salespeople or 500 customer support agents, or basically it reverts back because you had a user that, that edited it. So a rogue user in the world of salesforce.com doesn't delete data. He or she edits the data and clicks save. That's what a rogue user does. So backing up the data is really important because you want to be able to restore it either specific uh, uh, table spaces or fields and so on. And this is what the use case. Primarily it's because you want to maintain the compliance and, and all the reasons why you're doing backup for the data that you were in your, you know, in your own control in your own data center. It needs to extend to enterprise data that's sitting in clouds. And so Salesforce is popular, so we we're showing uh, the demo today, and you'll see it. You had, you had a question. Is this a, are you doing that through the Salesforce API or their hooks yes. to, to yes. join? Yes, okay. yes. We've done an integration between our DS client, which is the, the, you'll see it, the agentless collector. And what it does is it traverses the network, and it, lever it uses the credentials. You have to give it credentials to get access to the data. Mm -hmm. And then it uses APIs that are made available by Salesforce. They have a rich set of APIs. Of course, they have AppExchange. There's, I don't know how many tens of thousands of companies that develop stuff on, and then you can basically um, grab the data. That's and then, beautiful. Yeah. So I'm wondering, there are so many other services out there with very, very robust APIs. Like, I, are you familiar with If This Then This? If This and This, no. I-F-T-T-T? -T -T? Okay. Um, if This Then That. Or, or If This Then That, yeah. It's the, it, it's basically script, scripting uh, on the web, and it has interfaces to everybody. So. I mean, there are like so many applications that you guys can hook into and do backups on. That's yeah. So exciting. So <laughs> on the so you'll see on the on the horizon, Google the, the usual suspects, the Google apps, the the Office three sixty five, the Microsoft things. 
But then we are working very closely with our service provider ecosystem. And they all have applications and customers and partners in their own ecosystems downstream that either are the vendors for the SaaS apps themselves or they're going to be making partnerships. Almost in every country in the world, there are specialized software companies that do tax reporting because every country has its own tax code and all these kind of things that are typically hosted on SaaS so that consumers can go into these businesses as well. So this is just a whole new landscape of applications and data that now needs the, to be protected. This, for this is the need the world will, will discover in a year or two that yeah, if you run Exchange, 90% of the times people call the help desk. It's not exchange crash, please restore the data store. It's. I screwed up. Oh, I deleted well, a message. Well, they rarely admit that that, but. The, <laughs> the, the message. The system the message. ate the my message. The message disappeared. Yeah. yeah. They moved and, it into the wrong folder. And you have to restore it. Like but that. if you go to Gmail, the Gmail SLA says, if the whole database disappears, we'll restore it in a few days. Doesn't say anything about you. Yeah, yeah there is a discrete atomic restorage is awesome. That, that's yeah. right. So you'll see that. So let us show that to you. Um, <laughs> uh, c yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I get it. Away. So we have a, a dummy account. We created a fake company account. Of yeah. course. Yeah. So what we can do, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you can use the regular tools. I can delete it, right? So I can just okay. Let's delete it. So we did, there is no account anymore, and the uh, Salesforce that can help me. I have a recycle bin, I can restore it. Okay, it's still here. We have the undelete. Unless, of course, you put empty recycle bin. Food. Well, yeah, but we can also do it because we do backup, well, right? You we can, can yeah. yeah, but. But the Salesforce tool does. <laughs> exactly, yeah. so we go to account. It's back, so but now what if we want to change anything? We click simply on edit. So let's do so you're not a rogue user, you're just yeah, a salesperson so it, that it, changed, it's for very, example. It's, it's for a big company, right? So you see the amount, so it's like, let's make it, I don't know, just five bucks. Mm -hmm. And instead of five, uh, 9,000 employees, I think, I don't know, 40 will be enough. And then we will mess around the one, two, three. I don't know. So nobody knows the phone number you cannot even call that yeah nobody knows the trouble i see <laughs> <laughs> so okay so now i change it right there is no way back if we will go to recycle b and there's nothing there so what do we do okay so we have a uh, ds client so in, in this particular case it's installed here on this laptop so the sales for somewhere in uh, the city right San Francisco. No, I don't I know where the data center. I don't know where it's located. The center. I have no idea. The cloud. Okay. So the cloud <laughs> somewhere. So cloud I, I click on the restore. So click here. We're going here. So we restore their account. In this particular case, you can also choose original location, or you can go to alternate. They have the sandbox option. You can actually go and restore it there. So we're running. So so wait wait. Did you get that? You can actually restore the data directly into the live production environment in your Salesforce, or Salesforce gives you a sandbox that you can restore into it, and then you can move things across if you needed to. Okay, so, so what's the, gran the granularity of this restore? It's the field. Okay. So he just changed, was it three fields or four fields? Right. So you'll see that you can restore specific fields if you wanted to, or you can restore the entire thing. Okay, so now, as you can see, we got all the information back, the annual revenue, the number of employees and the phone number, so we got it back. So of course you can do it, uh, just a simple example, because you can have all the leads, campaign, contacts, opportunities, a lot, a lot of data, right. and you can restore it, you can do it also. You can run the backup for the entire database, actually, with everything, and you need to restore it. For example, you want to restore just uh, contracts or whatever you choose and restore it. So you can restore the entire database schema or specific fields, as you basically expect to in an enterprise backup uh, application. So, and I think that's the demo around salesforce.com. That's so, right, that's correct. So we can go back. Yep, and I'll just finish up with some non-software PowerPoints here. <laughs> You'll see that Asigra is the only enterprise backup application or platform that's able to backup and recover into a single repository all the different array of types of data, everything from mobile devices, tablets and smartphones, Android and iOS, to, to laptops, desktops, 
servers, physical, virtual, in the data center, remote sites outside the data center, databases and so on, as well as extend it out into now cloud-based data that the enterprises have and will increasingly have more, all into a single repository. These aren't different suites or different applications under a common brand of a company that if you want this, well, this is its own you know, kind of uh, pool of data. This is all into the same DS system, okay? <coughs> Quick summary, we talked about IBM Smart Cloud. We have a DS client, let me just stand here and point to it, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, we have a, a DS client here and it's sitting inside Smart Cloud and it's able to back up data inside of it and it sends it to a different cloud, Japan to Canada. You can actually run the vault or the repository uh, in your own enterprise cloud and back up to it or you can keep the repository in the IBM Smart Cloud and back up your enterprise data into Smart Cloud. So it gives you lots of different flexibility. We talked about Salesforce.com, talking about the APIs that, are, uh, that we're leveraging over there. Again, same thing, you can back up Salesforce data to your own data center or to your service provider's data center or to another um, uh, cloud, if you will. Uh, Seagra is able to support multiple different types of endpoint devices. You'll see that on the Microsoft uh, part, it's a roadmap item. It's coming out very shortly, but today we have Android and, uh, and iOS. iOS. Again, yeah. all into the same common repository. Um, we're pretty much done. We're gonna show you uh, the demo uh, on the yeah, Galaxy S3 when we're all holding a beer in either the left or the right hand. If you want, Sergey will walk around and we'll show it to you. And um, we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to uh, work with the software and try it. So what we've done is um, we brought you guys some uh, take-home items. We're going to give each of you uh, a Nexus uh, tablet that you can actually, uh, it's got the Asigra application already on it, and that way you can create your own data. You can take photos wow. or pictures or whatever you like. Yeah, and what, you. what we've wow. done is we've created a, a vault cool. sitting in Toronto. And we've created an account for each of you so you can back up and recover the data as oh. if you were a user, so if you can really experience Ooh, the software. This is going to be a fun disclosure statement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's just an offer. You don't have to accept it. You can always donate it to a school or uh, it's a gift. It's a Christmas gift uh, that you don't have to shop for uh, for someone. So you guys definitely win best um, swag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Uh, this, this beats the sh to the shirt with my Twitter handle. In there. Uh, there's uh, <laughs> there's a uh, second information. Yeah. This is yeah. Uh, on, on each one of them. Tim Tree, we love the shirts. Yeah. We really do. <laughs> we do. Hey, the shirts beat the pens. But, I mean, you know. I legitimately loved absolutely everything uh, you did. Before. I got handed a Nexus. But, <laughs> this does, I should say, like we've been handed things by people before, and it doesn't curry favor. I mean, I like. It's not that. about that. Yeah. It's about you trying the application yes. out. That's what it's for. Because we know you guys all have tablets. You don't need another tablet. It's not that you don't have a tablet. We know that. <laughs> it's about using the Asigra yeah, software and experiencing it. <laughs> yeah. that, that's what it's about. It's not uh, the application well, is you. already there, You're installed. Uh, what you will need to oh. do, uh, you need to enter your encryption keys. Okay, there's also, there's uh, when you open it, there's a uh, file you click, you will have all the information. The IP address for our storage vault, uh, the account number. So you will simply enter this information and you're good to go. So you have capacity. We're gonna keep the vault up for 12 months. Cool. And then we're going to delete the data. It's really just for try it out with your labs at home or you know wherever it is that you have your labs. That, that's really what it's for. Yeah, and it's in, encrypted well, with the two yes, encryption keys, so yeah. don't Great. worry about the data. <laughs>